How about you, Barb? When were you diagnosed with COPD? Officially, about two years ago, but I can remember back maybe 10 years ago, I had a breathing test, a lung function test, and they said I had COPD, but they didn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And I just went on with my life, and then I had pneumonia. What made you go to the doctor? The fact that I couldn't get from my front door to the mailbox on the corner uh, from my house without panting like a old war horse. Did it happen suddenly or gradually? It gradually got worse and worse, and finally I had a doctor's appointment, and then I decided to mention it to her. Mm -hmm. And that's when they did lung x-rays, and she told me I needed uh, to go on oxygen. Sure. So they did an overnight study at home with a pulse ox and what have you. And my primary doctor took care of it for about a year, year and a half, and then I decided I wanted to travel. So I went and got a pulmonologist so that I could fly to Denver, to Dallas, to Tucson, to Key West. Mm -hmm. How was it to travel with COPD? <laughs> the biggest problem is I'm a widow. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing it by myself. So I am pulling a portable oxygen concentrator. Mm -hmm. I have a duffel bag with two extra batteries and two chargers, one for AC, one for DC, plus 50 foot of tubing. Plus I got my luggage, plus I got my tote bag with all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Plus when you're flying with oxygen, you have to make arrangements, which each of my trips I planned three months ahead, because you have to notify the airline, you have to line up with their system and what they require from your doctor, from other testing and everything else in order to give you an okay. Then you gotta have all these papers with you at the airport. And I found out the hard way that if you have a handicap, you cannot check your luggage out on the sidewalk, you have to get it into the counter. Now if you're handicapped, how do they expect you to do that? Exactly.